Randon Real Estate, 77 WABC. And I promised you I was going to talk to you about kids and um, and share a strategy with you, which I think really illustrates how to invest in real estate the right way. We have a staying in ownamerica.com, my, my company. I'm the CEO of a company called Own America, which is dedicated to advising small real estate investors, maybe just like you. And we have a saying that goes, have a kid, buy a condo. And what we mean by have a kid, buy a condo is when you have a kid, one of the first things that happens is you start thinking about diapers and the cost of that and how you can't go out with your friends every night anymore. And then you start thinking about college because it doesn't take you very long to realize that right now it costs a couple hundred thousand bucks to send a kid to college. Lord knows 18 years from now when little munchkin graduates high school how much it's going to cost. And it's a really, really big bill. And let me tell you, you don't want to stick your kids with student loans if you can help it because the only place in America where there's no pressure to lower costs is in colleges, it seems like, because they get more and more and more expensive, many times the rate of inflation. And I have a niece, my, my wife's niece, wonderful kid, hardworking student, just graduated from grad school and has got 120000 bucks in debt that right now she's paying $2,000 a month. Now, I don't know how she's going to get out of the gate with a financial future with that kind of a burden on her back. So you don't want to do the loans if you can help it. But how do you do it? How do you secure college funding? Here's what I did, and here's what a lot of my clients do. You have a kid, you buy a condo. Or you have a kid, you buy a small real estate investment. Now, why is that big? Why is that helpful? Number one is that I automatically have a long-term mentality about this investment. I am not a buyer and flipper. I'm not a get-rich-quick guy. I'm looking at this for 18 years from now. My objective, not only is it long-term, which fits in well with real estate, not only um, am I making an investment and holding it and paying it down, but it's an investment that's very, very close to my heart. You know, I, when I get the phone call from the annoying tenant, it's not so annoying because I'm thinking about my kid's college fund. When the you know toilet's overflowing and I have to call the plumber in the middle of the night, it's not quite as annoying because the objective that I've set for this particular investment is so important to me. And by the way, when a recession hits like we just are going through right now, there wasn't a moment during the last three or four years during this recession where I even contemplated flaking out and dumping those properties because they were losing value. Didn't even think about it. Doesn't matter because my kids are eight and six. I've got more than a decade left on both of their timetables before those investments have to mature. <clears throat> and I'm certain that um, there'll be a revival of the real estate market between now and then, hence the term the big real estate revival. But have a kid buy a condo shows you that if you anchor your investments to A, a long term plan, B, a very, very powerful, passionate objective in your own brain, in your own heart, that's the right way to do it. Now, when you first have a kid, all your aunts, all your uncles, they're all willing to throw you a couple of bucks to help. All right, You usually get some seed money up front. If you go to your parents, your uncle, your aunt, and say, look, I don't want you to write me a check in 18 years to help me fund college. I don't want you to set up one of those tax-deferred savings accounts for my kid's college. Just give me 10 grand now. All right, You can gather up some resources, and if you suck it up now, make that down payment happen now, and buy that investment now, you might find that you'd like, I bought a condo that was um, negative cash flow, meaning it cost a couple hundred dollars more per month than I was able to generate in rent. But I don't care because I wasn't buying it for current income. I was buying it to be able to have a chunk of change 18 years later. Now it's been six years. That condo is now positive cash flow. I make a couple hundred dollars extra a month. I use that $200 extra a month to pay the mortgage off faster. So I send in more money to pay the mortgage off. I'm now down to the place is worth less than it was, more than it was when I bought it, less than it was at the peak. But I know that I'll have probably about 300 grand paid off piece of real estate when the time comes. And you know what? She's a little genius. So if she decides she doesn't want to go to college, she can just take the money or I'll take the money. I'll buy a yacht with it, which is also good. <laughs> but here's the question. So for each kid, is it you buy a condo for each kid or is it you buy one condo for all your kids? I think you buy for each powerful objective. You see if you can buy one piece of real estate. We call it compartmentalized investing. Okay, set a long-term objective, junior, daughter, um, retirement income, retirement lifestyle. I want to buy this investment so that when I pay it off, I can use it to buy a, a, to buy a bigger house to retire to. All of your investments should not just be, I'm buying it and I'm going to hold it for as long as I feel like it. They ought to be all about investing for some very specific purpose. You're listening to Randon Real Estate, 77 WABC.